Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased to be standing here and to talk to you about uh, this very hot topic about harmful and potentially harmful constituents in electronic cigarettes. I, I will cover in this talk uh, what's available in the literature. I unfortunately will not be able to cover the unknown unknowns in <laughs> constituents of uh, electronic cigarettes. Um, this is just for you, my conflict of interest in relation to this talk. Please keep in mind that I've been uh, uh, receiving money for conducting research from ASIC and A-Liquid companies. And let me start it with the very obvious facts. Um, electronic cigarettes do not contain tobacco, are not, uh, do not use combustion to produce their aerosols. They vaporize a nicotine containing solids, and for this reason, they will not cause tobacco related disease. Full stop. Very simple. I could close my talk here, but I'm sure Jerry will be very much disappointed with me, so I really need to go on. I will not indulge very much on nicotine because I'm sure Maché is going to talk more about this, but let me just uh, underline a few facts. Nicotine is a neurostimulant, it's not a poison, right? Nicotine is not the reason for smoking-related disease. In fact, it's not a carcinogenic compound by air standard, does not cause lung disease by per se, has minimal effect on cardiovascular disease. And uh, even an electronic cigarette is not nicotine, but other chemicals that may be problematic, as you will see in a few minutes. So that's the reason why when a, a group of uh, distinguished experts, including me, uh, had a, a reunion in London, we decided to score electronic cigarette four on a scale of risk compared to 100, uh, which is a conventional tobacco cigarette. Uh, I, I understand this relates to the current knowledge, Anno Domini 2013, relating to uh, electronic cigarettes, because we know a lot about conventional cigarettes in terms of harm. We know a bit less about electronic cigarettes uh, in, in terms of harm, but I'm pretty much sure that even though there may be some, try to see my, yeah, okay, some variability across the X axis, I don't think e SIG will ever come across the whole spectrum on the opposite side of tobacco cigarette or close to it, as many people from the opposite camp, camp are trying to, uh, to say and support. So, tobacco harm reduction is the, as you all know, substitution of a low risk nicotine containing products for cigarette smoking. So it's a substitution for smoking. Vaping is an alternative to smoking. And e-cigarettes should be marketed to smokers. So smoking, smoke, um, cigarette smoking is our official competitor for the sake of this talk. But the problem is that how low is this low risk that we are talking about? compared to tobacco cigarettes, is vaporization of electronic liquids generating harmful products. We don't know that. There's some evidence, but the, before starting with the evidence of harmful and uh, potentially harmful constituents, let me remind you what is already the good news. First off, people being using electronic cigarettes have a consistent reduction below the limit, the threshold limit of 7 ppm of uh, exhaled monoxide carboxide when they use electronic cigarettes. And this is a toxic constituent of combustion. And likewise, stable free radicals and reactive oxidant species will all lead to oxidative stress and inflammation, and carcinogenesis. And all these things, they are basically nil, close to zero. 
because there's no combustion. Of course, electronic cigarettes heat. They, they can reach some heat, and that's the reason why we are talking here today. We want to understand whether this reduced heating, this uh, residual heating in these products can generate harmful, potentially harmful constituents. And to do so, I just uh, took advantage of a recent review we just published with uh, Constantinus, and we uh, went on to discuss a number of constituents in electronic liquids. And uh, for nicotine, I will just uh, use the one single slide, just illustrating that uh, in uh, immortalized myocardial cells, nicotine doesn't do any toxicity, doesn't cause any toxicity at all, regardless their concentration. Let's go to main ingredients, which, is, uh, uh, which has been a very uh, hot topic for debate in the last few months. Okay, the main ingredients, as you all know, are probably glycol and, uh, and glycine. Uh, PG is safe. It, it's a GRAs compound. It's safe for inhalation. Uh, it, it is constituent of theatrical fog. And, uh, but you should know that the theatrical fog is not USB grade. So when you review the literature and see that there are a lot of the irritant effect from uh, propylene glycol, it's because it's not USB grade. Of course, there'll be residual irritant effects. But uh, in this life, what's devoided of all risks? No, there's some unacceptable risk that we need to take, and we want to reduce big risks. Um, and glycerol inhalation in animals causes mild changes in upper respiratory tract, which is perfectly acceptable because it's an irritant effect, and inflammation is a defensive mechanism to compensate for those irritant effects. So some inflammation has to be taken into account. Uh, and even in tobacco cigarettes, these humectants are present. And by themselves do not elevate toxicity, but because the tobacco cigarette is already massively toxic. Uh, in terms of cytotoxicity, uh, the base ingredients are not cytotoxic at all. Okay, the, these uh, experiments presented by Farsalino's group have been replicated by others. But, uh, Many of you are aware of uh, scaremongering information and news coming from the media, especially uh, international media, and in Spain particularly, saying that uh, vegetable glycerin can cause lipoid pneumonia. And why is that? Because some eminent respiratory physicians saw in the bronchial alveolar lavage this. These are alveolar macrophages. <coughs> repleted with fat. Fat is the red color. They use a specific staining for, uh, for highlighting the presence of fat. But in the specific case of, uh, uh, of Spain, I believe that the Spanish respiratory physicians were misled by a previous publication, which was published in CHEST, and which I tried at that time to challenge by demonstrating that the case was in fact caused by fumigation of the house of this lady. And fumigants contains lipid. Electronic cigarettes do not, as many of secondary school chemist students will tell you. Of course, propylene glycol and many other constituents of uh, e-liquids can, can be irritants. You see here, um, uh, uh, a list, uh, quite impressive, quite scary, of a number of mouth, mouth and throat adverse events that can that have been reported through internet vapors forum. Okay, and if we want to attach a number to these events, uh, I used the Barcelona's recent survey on over 19,000 consumers, which basically says that uh, you know events are possible 
can be frequent, but allergic events, truly allergic events, are in the range of 1, 2, or 3 percent, which is exactly what you expect when you use a cosmetic or when you use a drug. So hypersensitivity is there because we're human and we defend ourselves from, you know, external substances. And to bring this uh, topic to a more, more stressful level, let's have a look at very sensitive people, people with asthma. People with asthma have bronchial hyperresponsiveness. They have an abnormal response, bronchoconstrictive response of their airways to noxious stimulus coming from the environment. Why is that? Because we defend ourselves, for God's sake. But in asthmatics, these uh, events are abnormal. Okay? But you see, worse side effects accidents, again, 1%. So this is exactly what happens when I take a Ventolin, an inhaler which is used to cure asthma, to, to reverse bronchoconstriction. There are some um, stabilizers in, in these drugs that can cause bronchoconstriction in 0.51% of the users. So this is in line with, uh, with life, basically. Flavorings is, is uh, perhaps the, the major thing here. If you want to look uh, at, uh, at flavors, you may use different approaches. One of the most uh, interesting approaches that's being used, although criticizable, is that of uh, you know, using cytotoxicity. And you see here, very well illustrated, Untreated cells, they're flourishing on the bottom of the petri, tree, or the petri dish. And a cigarette is doing absolutely nothing to these cells, so they are thrive happily in their media. But see what the cigarette smoke excerpts do to these cells. They die, to, they detach from the bottom of the petri dishes. So we're using this model for some electronic liquid constituents. And we'll start with this uh, data from uh, Romania and colleagues. Um, as you can see, let's start from the top uh, left panel. Uh, you see a number of electronic liquids. They generated vapor and they exposed, uh, in this particular case, fiber, um, immortalized fibroblasts. All right? And you see the black line, which is tobacco cigarette, smoke mainstream is causing big damage to these cells. So cells are extremely sensitive to tobacco smoke, but not to Tuscan, Blackfire, Ozone, their brands. Other brands, Reganite, Vanilla, Sedentoli, and other brands again. But um, in this list of 32 brands and flavors, they could identify coffee being marginally cytotoxic. I'll leave it to you for judgment whether this is an important information or not. Um, Behar from Purdue Group in University of California, uh, they went on to discuss more about uh, flowering cytotoxicity, focusing particularly on cinnamon. Why cinnamon? Because they did some uh, panel runs and they found the one cinnamon brand being fairly toxic. So they, they went on and they focused on cinnamon only uh, uh, illiquid extracts. And you will see on the uh, right hand upper panel what happens with these three compounds which are uh, containing cinnamon. There's a huge differences. Can you see those lines? You know, they are all containing cinnamon, and yet they are big order magnitude difference. At the same time, if you use uh, a more sensitive cell lines, the, um, in this case, embryonal stem cell line, you can see more cell death. So when you set up your protocol, try to think of your cell lines you want to use, because if you want to, have positive or negative results, you pick up the best cell line you want. So 
So you take a very sensitive cell line if you want to demonstrate that uh, a compound is toxic. If you don't want to demonstrate that, you use something different. Usually FDA wants 3T3 fibroblast immortalized cells for drug uh, evaluation. <laughs> Um, again, the, the, last, uh, the last panel, the bottom panel, shows clearly that uh, by using these uh, cell lines, very sensitive cell lines, the cytotoxicity is already reached at 10 minus 4 molar. That's worrying. Not so worrying. Because it's very strange that this 10 to minus 4 is 400 times higher than the approved limit by APA for sun and, for sun and aldehyde. Okay? That tells me that probably they've been using not refill fluid, but do-it-yourself fluid, very concentrated. And that's the only explanation for that. Besides, in this experiment, they're using liquid, not aerosols. So it's not really a realistic condition uh, in this experiment. So. I don't regard those. So yesterday we talked quite a lot about the acetyl and acetyl Um These two compounds are used for their battery taste in a variety of food preparation, and they're safe and approved for food use by FEMA. Okay, uh, so they're used also for electronic liquid, uh, for many electronic liquid uh, brands. However. We know from occupational medicine that they can be harmful when inhaled because they cause a very specific disease which is called obliterative bronchitis. So because of this, it is important <coughs> to know whether electronic cigarette liquids contain these compounds. Uh, Constantinus took the, the courage to take 159 different samples from 36 manufacturers and tested for the presence of uh, diacetyl, uh, diacetyl and uh, uh, for these compounds by HPLC. And 74 of them were containing diacetyl, despite clear labeling instructions that were saying no diacetyl in, in the product. This is dishonest, but it's really risky. I'll show you that my opinion is not, and I hope Constantine is about, so we are going to have another discussion. <laughs> um, so these are the, uh, the levels, uh, the average daily levels, average daily levels, so there's a problem, there may be a problem now, uh, of, of these, um, of diacetyl and acetyl propanide. And you see they are just above, fairly above NIOSH limits, which means NIOSH limits are very strict criteria, but it means that uh, something can be done. But how much diacetyl is in the cigarette? There's quite a lot. Actually, more than 400 times in one single cigarette. So that tells me that it is an avoidable risk, but maybe it's not that much of a risk, but it's avoidable. I will quickly uh, talk about heavy metals, uh, and I will try to summarize what I have for you. Heavy metals are there, but uh, I mean, they can be generated from wick uh, and from uh, the atomizers, uh, but their levels is really within uh, the US pharmacopoeia levels, so they are not really dangerous. And of course, um, tobacco specific nitrosamines are in, found in traces. I think they are found in traces simply because um, most of the nicotine or solvents are not USB grade, so you can find contaminants. So these are contaminants, they are not really generated by combustion or by heating. There's a problem of thermal degradation with aldehydes, and I'm sure Maciej is going to talk more about those. But really, I want to conclude this talk by just showing a final slide, if I may. See you on the left. <laughs> oh, right, sorry. <laughs> and the final slide is 
my proposed handprint for the assessment of harmful and potentially harmful constituents. Not for, for the assessment, for the regulatory proposal. And uh, I will start with GNP standards. You really need to have liquid with GNP standards. That's obvious. Pharma grade is important. USP grade uh, um, solvents and nicotine are of uh, pivotal importance. Synthetic chemical flowerings are preferred to uh, natural flowering. Natural is a nice word. I love natural. But in this case, it will introduce a lot of problems. It's very difficult to toxicologically characterize flowerings, which are not synthetic. We need some sort of term temperature regulation, and we need to study more the materials which comes in contact with the e-liquid, particularly metals in the wick, chromium, lead, nickel, and plastics. And all of this for customer safety. And uh, <coughs> needless to say, this is my hand, and this is my view. Thank you.